Hi, my name is Roger Billy and this is a 5 minute review on definite integrals and calculus. We are going to divide our presentation in three parts. First, we briefly discuss the geometric motivation regarding the concept of definite integrals as well as the definition and convergence of Riemann sums. The second part consists of presenting the fundamental theorem of calculus by means of a simple but insightful example. Finally, we address a more challenging, a more difficult problem for the sake of fixation. Assume that we have a continuous function f defined on the closed interval a mean, so that f of x is larger or equal to zero for all x in this domain. Then, the definite integral of f over the interval a mean is well defined. We denote it in this way and it gives us the area of a region capital R, where capital R is limited by the graph of F, the x-axis, and the vertical lines x equal to A and x equal to B. Now, formally, this mathematical object is defined through a Riemann sum, which, roughly speaking, is given by a limit coming from summing up the areas of arbitrary thin rectangles as illustrated here. Now the thing is that it is possible to calculate definite integrals without explicitly calculating Riemann sums, as we are going to see next. Suppose that we are given the problem of finding the area of the region capital R limited by the graph of f, where f of x is equal to x, by the x-axis in the vertical lines x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. From elementary geometry, we know that the area of capital R is nothing but 1 squared divided by 2, which gives us the value of 1 half. Now, in this case, it is not so dramatic to calculate a Riemann sum as it did down here, also getting the value of 1 half. But what we want to do is to use a more sophisticated tool namely the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, FPC, that says that I only need to find a function, capital F, so that the derivative of capital F with respect to x is equal to x for all x in 0, 1, and then I calculate f of 1 minus f of 0. It is not difficult to see that the function I put here, x squared divided by 2 plus 7, satisfies this property. So we only need to calculate the value of this function at 1, at 0, and diminish getting 1 half as well. So now we are ready to address a more difficult problem. Let us take a look at problem 1. Here we want to calculate the area of the region limited by the x-axis and the curve given by points x, y, so that y is equal to 1 minus x squared. This curve can be seen as the graph of a quadratic function f, so that f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared. Here it is easy to see that the graph of f crosses the x-axis at x equal to minus 1 and x equal to 1. So, the region we are interested in is colored here in red and denoted by capital R. We have just learned that the area of capital R is given by the definite integral of 1 minus x squared on the interval minus 1, 1. Then, from the fundamental theory of calculus, we know that we only need to find a function whose derivative is equal to 1 minus x squared. It is not so difficult to come up with x minus x cubed divided by 3. If I look at 1, the derivative of x is equal to 1 and the derivative of minus x cubed divided by 3 is equal to minus x squared. And we use this notation for the following. Let me go from down here to up here. We only need to calculate the value of this function at x equal to 1 minus this function calculated at x equal to minus 1. And this gives us four thirds. Now I hope you enjoyed this short video on definite integrals. Thank you very much.